Hello and welcome to the DFS underscore PhD show for the main slate of week 13 on December 3rd. Remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, someone's going to win that money. And might as well be us or stay odd, 1020 design. It's three top fives this week, so things are going well over there. With this, um, I think it's a stochastic sims trial. I'm messing around with some MMA today. These are my exposures. I have them up in the Discord. But you can see these are my maxes. I go over to MMADFS.com and I set the maxes to be the chance of a quick win or in the case of somebody with a lot of volume, a big win. Um, yeah, so light fade on the obvious favorite everybody's going for. It's the Karian or whatever your name is. I don't know any of these guys, though. I don't pretend to know MMA. So let's get over to football. Um, I do know how to win MMA, which is don't pay full salary. So I left $500 on the table. Um, okay, so for the football slate this week, I've got a few quarterbacks I like. Doesn't look like I'm getting to any of Justin Herbert or CJ Stroud in these early drafts. I like CJ Stroud, though. I don't think that's gonna gonna stand. Um, getting to a whole lot of Russ Bus. I don't know about that. 15%. I'll match the field. I don't think he's bad chalk, but I don't think I need to be leaning a million percent. Russell Wilson this week. Yeah, Derek Carr, Gardner Minshew, Kenny Pickett. Those guys are all fine. But I think like, I don't know, in my 150, I'll probably be like 3x the field on Carr. Yeah, two and a half. Yeah, about the same on Minshew. And I don't really want to go any higher on Pickett either. So maybe spread around some of this quarterback position. Yeah, I get a little bit more Jalen Hurts in here. A touch of Brock Purdy, mostly more Tua. Yeah, I like Tua stacks. That's good. Okay, so now let's check out the RB over in RB land or Jamin Zach Moss. No surprise to anybody. This will be your core for the week. If we go across all, I'm sure he's even higher. He's probably some in the flex as well. Uh, oh, no. Okay, it's all RB. Well, Zach Moss, 75%. Don't care how big, how owned he is. He should be more owned. I, I, if you, if I had more balls, I would go 100. percent But I had to guess like what's his chance of injury or other kind of failure, and I guess that's about 25. percent uh, Rashad White, similar story. I think he's almost as good of a value, and Christian McCaffrey. So those three guys make up my core this week. I'm going to have just like 100 lineups that have those three guys in them, more or less. After that, you get a next layer of guy, Olave Hill, guys that are in passing offenses that run the routes that get them the upside. Then you got like Javante Williams, meh, whatever. Brees Hall has upside again. I like having Brees Hall in here. Um, let's see. Let's go over to wide receiver. Yep, some Guyton. I'm a big Guyton guy. Robert Woods, totally fine with that. That offense passes more than you'd think. I don't really, I don't eliminate that many uh, wide receivers. From the field, you can see it's a pretty broad field of wide receivers. Um, let me look. Guyton, A.T. Perry, nobody's going to go back to him after last week. He's probably still fine. Devontae Parker, Alec P Pierce, Julio Jones, Chris Moore. These guys are all kind of like, maybe I should have unclicked them. So I don't know. I, just for a 150, I kind of leave them in. For my 20, I'll probably unclick some of these not as good wide receivers that... Uh, or still fine to be there as part of a stack, but um, yeah. Oh, tight ends. I haven't talked about tight ends yet. Gray McBride, Logan Thomas, Brevin Jordan. Are we still not? Am I still having to pro project him that way? What's going on? Jawan Johnson. Okay. So it's, wait, who's the Houston tight end that they're projecting? Because Schultz is out. I'm projecting Brevin Jordan. They are projecting nobody. Is that am I am I reading this correctly? So their projection is has it been updated to include that Schultz is out? Yeah, they know Schultz is out. So they're projecting, I guess, Houston to have no. Let's keep scrolling until I get to a Houston tight end. Yeah, they're projecting literally no tight end for Houston at this time. So I'm gonna project that Houston have a tight end, and his name is Brevin Jordan. Maybe I should be projecting a different guy. But anyway, whoever it is that is that Houston tight end, 
You should have him. I think it's probably Brevin Jordan. Do they not have anybody else on the roster? What's going on here? I don't know how to scroll by team. That's my... Okay. Yeah. Tegan Quirino or whatever. I don't understand how you could not project Brevin Jordan for work to, this week, but they're not. So you probably should. Uh, I should also probably limit that. Oh, 15%. That's fine. But yeah, tight end's pretty gross this week. You can see like yeah, Sam Laporta is fine, but tough to get to because he's appropriately priced now. <sighs> and you know the rule on defense. I always follow the rule because defense doesn't go like you think it should every week. So I just cross out the highest owned defenses because two of them aren't even that good. Like the Panthers and Patriots are like 10% and bad this week. So Bucks and Falcons are more than 10%, but also good. But I don't care because they're not the best. The Dolphins are the best defense. I'll take Dolphins and then a whole bunch of these other ones. And I'll still cross out a few of them that I don't like, you know, like against Miami. Don't think that's a great upside upside defense. Um, Eagles actually do seem pretty good. Well, we'll see. At 1%, 0.5%. Whatever. I can never figure out what people are doing with defenses. I won't try today. I should probably go take a nap is what it sounds like. Um, but instead, I'll probably just start thinking about NBA. But yeah, so this is my overall setup. I think I already said my core. Yeah, Zach Moss, Rashad White, and Christian McCaffrey. Looks like Olave and Hill are also pretty much core level if you want to start from there. I don't know if they can all go on a team together or not. Now that I'm looking at the actual value, though, I probably got to extend Moss up to 80 and emphasize the difference between him and Rashad White, who is not quite that good. And then McCaffrey should be my second highest owned guy. Yep, I like that. Because so, Mc... yeah, Zach Moss is just by far the best player this slate, and I'll die on that hill. Um, and really, the next level of core guys is just kind of like McCaffrey because you have salary, and then Rashad White because you want volume. So those are your guys. Um, there's plenty of other ways to go. I've already told you the quarterbacks I'm going to. That tells you the other guys I'm going to. I'm going to play stacks. If you look at my stack exposure, QB1, QB2, occasional run back. The run backs are like 20% this week, it looks like. That's fine. 12% no stacks. That's interesting. Yeah, I might I might uh, tighten up my stack exposure. This is a lot of run back. Oh, okay, those are all zeros. Well, good. All right. Secondary stacks, I didn't even tighten up. I don't know if it's going to be like 100% or what. Okay, 80, 96. Okay, so it's almost 100% double stack. Seems a bit much, but that's okay. I'm not going to undouble stack stuff. Okay, well, I think that says that about does it for the week. I've already told you I can I'll probably tighten this wide receiver pool up a bit. 31's a lot. Some of these guys are pretty bad here at the bottom. Yeah, like what, what was going on here? Did I do... I don't even understand what my rubric was for eliminating people from contention this week. Possible I just didn't look at the wide receiver screen, forgot to, or decided not to. Looks like we have a lot of questionables that are going to be a, an important part of this week as well for wide receivers, so pay attention. I don't really think any of these guys are actually questionable, though. So, oh, That is my assumption as I yawn at you and make this video. Okay. Yep, I'm fine with every one of these plays that's in there right now, though, and probably just leave them in there because who cares? It's a 150 max, and that's how you get different in a 150 max is you sprinkle. You sprinkle all these guys that are 5 to 10%, and you sprinkle them 5 to 10% worth because who knows? Maybe it's A.T. Perry week. Maybe it's Jalen Waddle week, whatever. you got to have a little piece. I, I agree. Yeah, I'll probably just leave the, the big pool for the 150, and then I'll clone it, and I'll make that new pool. So I'll call this one 20 max. Or 150 max. And then I'll build the new pool and call it rename him 20 max. And in the new pool, we're more restrictive with our wide receivers as such. So, probably, Papa, what do you think? Uh, minimum up. Okay, so where's the value end? We need to allow value of. Why is Brownlee completely unowned? I don't understand what's going on there. Oh, oh, okay. So I do. I added an ownership filter for people who are owner owned more than 0.1%. Okay, that's fine. 
but it does mean that whenever there's an ownership failure, you're going to have that guy excluded from the pool. Now, oh, whatever. I think that probably a good minimum would be like eight. I don't want any of these guys that are below. Well, Curtis Samuel below eight? What are y'all doing? What is this projection for a what? Washington at Miami? What is this whole game projected for? Washington at Miami? You got Washington projected for 20? I don't know, guys. Miami scores a lot of points. I don't think they're going to lose by 10. I'll, I'll put 24 points for Washington. And let me go over here because shocking to me to project Curtis Samuel for freaking no points like that. I mean, still got to project it for nine. I'm going to have to do some main. Curtis Samuel might be their wide receiver one. I mean, like him and Dotson definitely better than Terry McLaurin. So, I mean, better as receivers. I don't know if their opportunity is better. I, I know it's not. But at the same time, I I don't know. Even with this adjustment for Washington, I'm very positive about this offense. I think making further tweaks is probably warranted. Curtis Samuel and Dotson both have a higher upside. I'm not sure it's a max one thing either. So I came here to eliminate more wide receivers. And instead of that, I have kind of added and tweaked a little bit more than I meant to over here in the 20 max pool. But yeah, I'm just going to eliminate a lot of these guys who are kind of garbage that I don't think should be owned by me in my Millie Maker attempts this week. Click, 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 click. And then we're getting close. Now we're getting close. These guys are all fine. Yeah. Okay. So it's about eight. All right. So about eight leaves me with my pool of 20 or a 20 max. I didn't add any uh, custom rules today. You kind of, you felt me going towards one there. You can add it if you want. If you wanted to, the way you would do it is you'd probably make Dotson and Samuel both 14 or 15, make them both the wide receiver, make them <laughs> wide receiver one, a B and C with McLaurin and say max two of three. That's one way to do a rule there. Uh, that I think would be a reasonable rule to include. But besides this, wow, Jonathan Mingo is still super cheap, man. He's out there all the time. I'm, I mean, eventually he's got to catch a pass, right? I mean, I guess he should eventually catch a pass. All right. That's about all I got for you today. Make sure to keep up with us on Twitter, join the Discord, and um, remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it. Someone's got to win that money, and it's a million dollars. It's serious money. Might as well be us.